Hey, this is Anton from GT Canada, and today I want to show you what a bad phaser sounds like, or can sound like, in a Ford 5.4 liter V8 motor. This is a 2010 Ford Expedition, and it started to make a weird sound at idle, and only at idle. And so, so what you are going to hear is me running the engine normally in drive with a little bit of a load on it and then I unplug the phasers from each side one at a time and do the same test and you can hear how the sound changes, comes and goes. So here you can hear a slight picking sound, that's what I was hearing, that's what I was trying to diagnose here. I'm unplugging the VCT just on this side. back in The other side. Both of them plugged in. So here I'm showing you an HP Tuner's log. This gives us a readout of the RPM. You can get the spark, your advance, your retard, your O2 sensors, your throttle position sensor, and all that. So we can get a good idea of how the engine is running under these conditions. So this particular log was taken while it was showing the um, characteristics that we saw already in this video. So it was just a slight sound. And what I wanted to know was, is the engine doing something with the spark or is this uh, something mechanical and as you can see from the log it is definitely something mechanical and not something that the computer itself is doing you probably won't have this readily available to you while you're diagnosing your engine but what i'm trying to show is if you did you should expect to have these sorts of readings as well and you could move on to diagnosing further if it is the phasers that are the problem or something else. So in a second here, I'm gonna play another clip for you. This is what it sounded like when it got really, really bad. And it wouldn't do this all the time. It would only do it once in a while. It usually was after it was running for a while and was warmed up and I was parked on an incline and it would make this awful rattling sound. And if I stabbed the throttle just to rev it up, then the sound would almost go away immediately and it wouldn't come back right away. So I, I got lucky enough to catch it one time. So I'm gonna play that for you now.
While it was doing this, I also thought it'd be a good idea to disconnect the coil packs one at a time just to see if the engine changes, try and isolate it to one cylinder. What I found was it didn't seem to change no matter what I did. So that told me that it was more uh, overall mechanical problem instead. So I paid a guy to do the cam phaser lockout on it. And this is a video of it right after, so you can hear what it sounded like running. You can also hear a little bit of an exhaust leak. The engine still wasn't running great, but it seemed to be running better. When we went out on the test drive, we made it about a block away, and then I noticed that my oil pressure dropped down to absolute zero, and I actually drove it back home with zero oil pressure and decided to tear into it a little bit further and, and see what was going on. So this part only has pictures. I pulled it into the garage, backed it in because I knew I was going to have to do some work, started taking the engine apart, and what I found quite quickly was that I had chunks of the timing chain guides that were missing. So the timing chains were really slack, and I could tell by seeing that right through the, the hole in the top of the timing cover once I had the, the valve cover off. So I knew something was going on and I'd have to dig into it further. So I, uh, once you pull the radiator out, there's actually quite a lot of room in there, and you can jump right in and, and pull the whole thing off. So here's a shot of some of the pieces that I was starting to recover and I knew I was going to be going in much, much deeper than I really wanted to. Once I got the oil pan off, you can see all the extra pieces were in there and a lot of sludge, so um, definitely had found the culprit. I was able to clean that all out and get it all back together. Um, the oil pickup was also totally plugged up, so rather than buy a new one, I did just clean this one up. I, I spent a lot of time cleaning it to make sure there was no extra pieces. Here you can see how I locked the cams into position with some vice grips. So this helps to hold them in place after you take the timing chains off, and it allows you to retime the engine very, very easily. I did roll it around until I was at top dead center just to make sure if I screwed something up, I would be able to still fix it and in this position even if they do slip a little bit it won't actually hit anything to cause any damage but having those vice grips on there saves a lot of hassle. So I was able to tear it all down just with basic hand tools and a lot of time and patience so to get to this point took me the better part of one full day and it was a full full day. I was able to put all the new parts back in get the timing all set right, and then I took this picture just before I started to put it all back together again. To do this job, you're gonna have to get to three points of the engine. So the bottom, where the oil pan is, will need to come off if you've got pieces down in there. If you don't have pieces, then you won't have to go down there, but it's worthwhile if you have any pieces at all. Uh, you need to obviously get to the front, and then you need to also take the valve covers off at the top. So a lot of the engine's gonna be apart, but again, it's not difficult, it just takes some time, basic hand tools and some patience. Everything is pretty straightforward. If you do use the cam phaser lockouts like what I did, what you're going to find is you're going to get a lot of error codes. Some people say that you can run with those codes or you can get someone who has software like HP tuners and they can just tune those codes out so that you won't get a check engine light for those. It helps give you a little bit more peace of mind by going that route, but you do not have to. And another day putting the truck back together. It's ready to go, and as you can see here, it's looking good and worked beautifully for us afterwards. So good luck with uh, diagnosing your own VCT issues and deciding what route you need to go as far as the repair. Hopefully this video was useful for you and that you have the confidence and courage to try it yourself. Hey, thanks for watching another GT Canada video. We got lots of great stuff in store, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can stay up to date on all the latest stuff as we upload it. Comment below and watch the next video.